things, welcome back to another episode of The Main. I'm your host, Roshni Asher, and in today's episode, we'll be taking a look at the upcoming Batman movie, the co-author of Beanie Mania, and a new episode of Fashion Trends. But first, here's a recap of Winter Scenes. Nanya Gandesi has more. In the final week of January, Mattia's annual production of Winter Scenes took place, with three different stories coming to light. It is a student-led, student-directed production of different various scenes. Winter Scenes is a great program for beginners to get started as well, which is why most of the performers and directors featured were first-timers, one of them being Gowry, who had the most trouble with memorizing. I'm not the best memorizer when it comes to anything, honestly. But when I was like rereading the lines over and over and over and we were practicing and practicing, it just kind of like became muscle memory. For first time director Nanya, it was all about actually getting work done. Because we always laughed the whole time, but once they realized like the severity of like the show coming up and like finally started to understand their characters a little bit more, people started to, you know, uh, practice more. However, most of them emphasized that the best part of the entire process was... It's just like building that family. Honestly, like the cast and the family. Meeting new people. Your classmates as uh, directors, and they're not really uh, adults, but like, you know, you can like connect with them more and like you just like communicate better. I am so lucky in the way that I've gotten a cast that is so funny and so much fun to just talk to. Uh, like very unique people that you wouldn't meet on normally. Specifically, directors Ananya and Megan encourage more students to go and get involved with winter scenes. And we were just looking for like the chance for you to improve, the will to improve. And just stepping out there and putting yourself out there shows that you have that will to improve. Yes, for sure. It's such an amazing experience. You meet so many amazing people. So please get involved, yeah. For the main, this is Ananya Ganesi. Let's see how Matias hockey team takes on its senior night tradition. Ava Pilar has more. Uh, my favorite memory would have to be taking the win over Maine in overtime this year. Uh, probably our uh, Blackhawks rivalry series game against Maine. Beat them in overtime and the barn was packed. It would probably be the, the state game from last year, winning state. That was really fun. Um, definitely when we got when I got to raise up the trophy after the state championship last year, that was that was a great memory. Uh, it's definitely winning state last year in overtime. That was definitely a highlight. Uh, probably last year when we beat Wheaton West in the state championship. Probably winning the Carolina Cup um, against Niqua, beating Niqua and then beating North. Uh, or I would say the, the game that the Blackhawks sponsored against Maine, which was last week, um, where there was a good 500 people in attendance and, uh, and we won in overtime. Probably when we all did Secret Santa for our, for our team. Uh, my favorite memory from this whole season or from playing hockey is probably just uh, seeing all the teams develop, seeing like playing as a young kid and then playing with a lot of older kids and then now being a leader and being a senior. Uh, Theodore Winnick, he's uh, got a big truck with a big exhaust and I wouldn't want that pulling up to my house at 7 p.m. on a Friday night. Evan Ziegler, hands down, without a doubt, cannot date my daughter. Or Ziegler. <laughs> Either Evan Ziegler. Ziegs, Evan Ziegler. Uh, definitely Ziegs, Evan Ziegler, any day of the week. Evan Ziegler, all the way, Ziegs, no shot. Ziegs are definitely Evan Ziegler. Hi, my name's Evan Ziegler. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more hockey, make sure to look at the link listed on the screen. This is Ava Suarez for the main. Interested in learning more about different cultures at Matia? Come join us for Matia's Cultural Fair on February 11th from 2.45 to 4.30. Nine Matia clubs came together to host the first ever Matia event. Celebrate and uplift diversity in our school through food, games, crafts, and more. Clubs will be selling food and accessories throughout the event. The clubs participating are the Asian American Club, the Organization of Latin American Students, the Black Student Alliance, Muslim Student Association, Indian Student Association, Chinese Honor Society, German Club, French Club, and I Am in Awe. The event will have food and accessories for sale and will be accepting cash only. We hope to see you there. This is Amy Hannapel and Leon Kim for The Main. 2022 has lots in store for film, with the upcoming Batman movie being the most highly anticipated release. Here's Ananya Gandesi and Janae Hopgood with a quick rundown on everything you need to know. I have never watched a Batman movie and ever been disappointed. When that light hits the sky, 
Yeah, so boring. Listen, I am not a, a DC person, okay? I am a totally Marvel person. I lean towards Captain America for reasons I will not disclose, but literally Batman is a movie that never disappoints because it's not about the superficial Superman thing. It's about a man with real feelings underneath. And I think Batman was the first movie to ever bring up more than just good and evil. It broke those barriers and brought in characters that taught us more than that and made us question what really is good and what is evil. What we've been taught as children, is that still true? And Robert Pattinson is literally just brilliant. I mean, the devil all the time and, and Tenet and, and The Lighthouse and these amazing films that he's done. And then he switches, he does this kind of crazy switch to Batman and he's like so versatile. I feel like the character Batman can only be played by a certain genre of actors. I mean, similar to the Joker, you have a certain type of actor who can play them properly. You have Heath Ledger and Jared Leto and Joaquin Phoenix who played the Joker incredibly well. Christian Bale and like Michael Keaton, like that that brooding white male is like the, <laughs> or Ben Affleck too, mm -hmm. um, is like the perfect people, like they're the perfect people to play the Batman because they just have that kind of Batman presence about them. It's different faces, it's a fresh story, it's different villain, it's, it's a new approach to that same philosophy. Well, whatever it is, we're excited to see it because the Batman comes out in theaters on March 4th, 2022 and is rated PG-13. We'll see what happens then. Do you all remember Beanie Babies? I sure do. Here's Anya Pressian with the story of how a Naperville woman started the Beanie Baby craze. Picture this. It's the 90s and you've just come home from school. You turn on MTV and just go about your day. But all of a sudden, your mom walks in with dozens of Beanie Babies. What in the world could possibly have prompted this? The answer, surprisingly, can be found on a cul-de-sac in Naperville. Becky Phillips and some other women from Naperville and nearby suburbs drove this trend and made it the movement that it was. It became an obsession that Becky Essensor actually quit her job and she started calling full time. We called every store that we could possibly call and then started with the Chamber of Commerce. Before long, we had a complete collection of every beanie that we could possibly find. What was nice about it, there was other collectors in our area. Becky Eston Sorrell got hooked, and all the people in my cul-de-sac got hooked. That's it. I just have to have them. I just started going to the stores and looking for them, and became obsessed with it. And I got hooked, so, just because they're so cute. Beanie Babies took the world by storm and are widely considered the world's first internet sensation. We just love them because they're so cute and cuddly. You can squish them and toss them and stack them up and dress them up. And... <clears throat> Sorry. I was not the only one who loved these little stuffed animals. The um, stores were full of people who were waiting in line for the UPS truck to come by and to bring the ba be Beanie Babies to the store. Searching and hunting for the toys at every turn, she and Becky Estensero quickly became the go-to place for all collectors to research their beanies since it was extremely difficult to get comprehensive information from the producer, Ty. Counting all the catalogs and then documenting all the information, we were able to put our book together and it became an encyclopedia for Beanie Collectors. Becoming the one you go to for all things Beanie Babies, Becky Phillips has fond memories of her time as a Beanie connoisseur and expects to keep them in her heart in the future. We traveled all over the United States. We were on radio shows from California to New York and then we went, actually went to the UK and the children were able to join us going to California. And so we had some great trips with the kids. How, what fun it will be you know, to take a little rabbit and um, have your grandchild holding the rabbit as you're reading the story. For The Main, this is Ani Oppression. Now, here's a word from our sponsors. Good luck to you both. And now, Miss USA 2019 is... Chesley Christ was crowned Miss USA in 2019. North Carolina! But even before then, she set an example for young black girls throughout the country. Known not only for her beauty, but her great intelligence. 
Many Americans were in disbelief Sunday morning when she was suddenly pronounced dead. It's tough. Nobody saw this coming. And this is what's so upsetting to me. How do you know to offer someone help if you don't know they need the help? Chesley Christ, who was the 2019 winner of the Miss USA pageant, has died at the age of 30. Police say Christ apparently jumped from her Manhattan high rise yesterday morning. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Christ was an attorney in North Carolina and a correspondent for the entertainment news program Extra. Her mother stated that their family is shattered as they hadn't noticed any warning signs of depression. We have mutual friends, and yes, I found out from a friend of colleague of hers, this is what she said about her. She was the person who never had a bad day. Yeah. She gave you that feeling that you were the only one in the room when she was having a conversation with you. Now, there might have been 200, 300 people waiting in line to meet her, but she gave you that incredible gift of 100% being present. She lived a life full of passion yep. and determination um, and strength. She was a strong woman. Yes. So uh, this is a reminder, check on your strong friends. No matter how successful or happy or perfect someone's life may seem, anyone could need help. Mustangs, please reach out for help if you think you or someone you know needs it. And please, Check up on your loved ones. I'm Maylee Matlock for The Main. What was the year 2021 for fashion? Janae Hopgood finds out from our own Mustangs. Um, I actually really like sweater vests. I have my own sweater vests. I have a lot. So I think sweater vests were like a really good choice. They're comfortable. They're real comfortable. I always like layered it with like a jacket or something over it, or like a turtleneck under it. Mm -hmm. Over white button ups? Yeah, like button ups or like shirts like these. Like, go to bed. I love them so much. <laughs> I have a pair of demonias on the way. I'm a fan of platforms, but not for me. I'm like, oh. Are we talking about the Philo platforms? <laughs> Let's talk about the Converse platforms. <laughs> Probably one of the best, and I hope it never dies on it. I mean, I personally would probably not wear something per se, but if he can pull it off, like he can pull it off. Right, it's for the right people. If it's for the right person, you know. I, I like the bags, but I don't feel like everything has to be per se. Like, you can only make so many butterfly tops <laughs> until it just kind of like goes off, but they're cute. Like, I just would never wear it. I think it can stay fast. <laughs> yeah. I don't think Y2K was actually Y2K. They didn't, it wasn't, like, we have to go back and look at, like, Destiny's Child and other, like, bands like that. Yeah, the Y2K is one of my favorite styles. Right, I'm glad it's good. It's very iconic. Is like a great example of like what Y2K was kind of about. And this was, was not Y2K. <laughs> it was just putting on some baggy jeans and calling it a day. If you like what you see and want to be a part of the fun, make sure to ask your counselor how you can join media communications and productions, or just stop by room F216. Thank you guys for watching this episode of The Main. If you want to see more of our content, be sure to head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe. If that isn't enough, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Matia Main. From all of us here at Broadcast Journalism and Productions, stay safe and stay hyped.